Hi, this is Andrew from Synergy, and I'm here to talk about Synergy Air Pro. Synergy Air Pro is a broadcast automation system, but a whole lot more besides. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install it for you so you can see how that goes, and in later videos, I'll be showing you how we drive it. So without any further ado, let's install Synergy Air Pro. So we'll go ahead and install Air Pro. To start with, we'll need to install the Playout engine, so I'll select that here and hit the setup. The Playout engine is what drives our Playout, but it does a bunch of other things besides that we'll be talking about in later videos. I'll simply accept the defaults and let it run. When it's finished, in order to start up, it will ask you to reboot, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that as soon as it asks us to. So now we've rebooted, down here in the icon tray we have a new icon, which is the Synergy Playout dashboard. If I right-click on that, it allows me to open the configuration utility, because we'll need to configure the, the engine before we can use it. As you see here, we have 16 engines available, but if you wanted to run all of those on one server, you'd need a lot of hardware, and you'd probably need to talk to us first. I'm just going to configure one engine here, so I select it and hit the Configure button, and the Configure dialog comes up. Now, there are a number of tabs on here, but we're not going to be covering all of them, just the ones that are important. We'll give the channel a name, and then we, in the next section, we can see where we can put video and audio files that will play in the unlikely eventuality of a problem with Playout. Simply insert files in here, and these will be sent if Playout should be interrupted. The next section says, on start, immediately switch to live. This is for when you use the Air Engine as an SDI to IP or vice versa converter. Again, something we'll be talking about in later videos. The final section refers to the Event Manager server. This brokers events when you're using multi-channel setups, but we're not doing that now, so we'll go straight on to the next tab. In licensing, this is where we tell the engine how we're going to be driving it. As you can see, there are various different ways of doing it. We're going with automation control, so I'll select that. The next tab covers Playout. The first thing we want to do is select our output standard, which for this video is HDNTSC. The system warns us because if there were any existing playlists, this might cause problems, but since there aren't any, we can simply accept that. Having set our standard, then we can look at input devices. Input devices can be SDI input, or we can take input from shared RAM for other Synergy products for high performance. We'll be talking about that later. Output devices, can, again, we can select a device and from a list of SDI outputs. We can output to Windows. Uh, we can output a stream, or again, we can use the shared RAM. We're going to have a look at RTP output. On this tab, as you can see, we can select the address of the multicast. We can select between multicast and unicast, RDP and UDP. And we can lock the output to a specific video network adapter, which is our best practice. If we carry on from here, we can set PIDs. We have the button for SCTE35, which allows for regional and commercial opt-outs. And we can put in an OP47 subtitle PID if OP47 teletext subtitles are in use. Next, we can work with the encoder. We see here the choice of different encoders that we can use, the MPEG-2 and H.264 software encoders that are already widely used in our Synergy products, and in the presence of an NVIDIA board, we can add H.264 and HEVC using the NVIDIA hardware. You have a great deal of control over your stream from the bit rate, the rate mode of constant or variable, GOP structure, GOP length, chroma format, frame or field interlace coding, etc. Tune this to meet your requirements. Next is audio. We can select one audio pair from the eight audio pairs supported in SDI. We can change the audio PID if required. We can change the audio encoding, and we can make a bit rate that suits. Once this is all done, hit Finish, and our output is configured. The last thing that we're going to look at is computer graphics, and this is for this we'll be using Synergy Type. 
So I'll select the Synergy Type option here. Another word about inputs, it's also possible to select a live input from an RTP stream and you would configure that here. However, you can also do that on a per item basis in the playlist. The audio tab allows you again to use the eight audio pairs from the SDI specification and move them around if the default language that you wish is not the default language on your output. And finally, we have the proxy. This is one of the most powerful features in Synergy Air, and when it's enabled, content will be downloaded from network storage to a local cache on the playout server, so that should there be a network problem, your playout will continue. Once that's all configured, we can hit OK, and now you'll see that our engine has turned dark gray, which indicates that it's configured. The last thing that we want to do now is simply to switch it on and make sure that it's working. So I go back to the dashboard, select Show Dashboard, and hit Start. We have a green light, we have a blue screen, our Synergy Air Engine is ready for playout. Now it needs to be controlled, and that's what we'll be doing in the next video. So that's how you install Air Pro. In the next video, we'll be looking at control.